Ron and Frank, Wait. security nightmares. Ron and Frank, security nightmares. So, you want to do the start? I can. Hello, Hamburg. Hello, Hamburg. Ja, wo wir. Right. Herzlich willkommen. Welcome. While we are talking about surveys, there was a very relevant question missing. Which of you have caused a security matter? That was actually a question. Why is Honk not showing up? Forget it. Don't forget it. All right. Never mind. You are asking questions wrong again. Do you know someone who... As. That's the way you need to ask. Can you speak for a friend or ask for a friend? And you notice how it works, don't you? It's not the people that reveal themselves, it's their friends who do that. <laughs> Recently, someone on Twitter asked how operational security could be enforced, and I think what everyone agreed upon was, well, if you don't have a mother, yeah, and, yeah. Is, uh, and uh, that's why the machines are going to win, right? Die haben schon vier They've Tage had four days of Congress behind them. They are not finding that funny anymore. <laughs> da sind wir wieder. So here we are again, 15th event, OXF. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, who was there for the first one? Oh, that's okay. something. Okay, ten people. House am Kölnischen Park. House at the Kölnischer Park in Berlin, not Eidelstädter Bürgerhaus in Hamburg. No, we've been out of there for a long time. We were out of there for a long time, but we grew out of it. But you do see the successes of those. Uh, we've seen the first things at Eidelstädter Bürgerhaus. I remember at Eidelstädter Bürgerhaus we had a sewing machine. Uh, that accepted gifts of on disk, on floppy disk, yeah. Wer weiß, was Who eine knows what a disk, floppy disk is? Yeah. Ja, genau, das ist <laughs> yes, exactly, that's the save. icon on the save button. You're right. And, and when you if you uh, look at that sewing machine, if it can still be called that, if you look at that, we have the, that, the one we have downstairs, we see how far we've come in the last years. My goodness. And you think in five years we can... <laughs> so, animated GIFs? That's what we want to do, yes. Uh, welcome to the Congress and the last day of it. I know, I don't know how many of you are still fully alert and fully responsive, but we count on that. And those with the least amount of sleep, if you could <laughs> line up behind the microphones now and uh, tell us the things that you wouldn't never have told us otherwise, yeah. And, and uh, that after all the support marathon that other people call Christmas, right? So what is it like um, home networking at the grandparents? Can I just have a count how many devices are you now responsible for? It used to be maybe one laptop, then clearly there's the router that has to be patched by now as well, if someone else hasn't done it yet. And uh, what else is, come, is, is also there? Printer, camera? How many of you are in the parents' network, how are responsible? for more than three devices in the parents' network. More than five, maybe? Hmm. Yeah, well, that's... Uh, wow. More than 50. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. That will be different with our kids, I can tell you. And with more than 50, if you showed up with more than 50, I would have asked you, someone did up there. Okay. And so I'm going to ask the question, how many, which of you in the parents' network has to run MMAP at first to find out how many there are? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. We hope that the industry uh, is going to, to butt in here. A few ideas on that later. Okay, why are we doing this? As always, we want to speak about the security nightmares that we want to have because they might change something. Recently, uh, that has been the point more and more often. Things only change when there's really bad press. And of course, um, the ones we do not want, like cars, maybe they will change the wrong things. Because to be forewarned is to be prepared. And also, please, in chorus, it's good for the told you so karma. Yes. So, once again, please, the told you so karma. <laughs> Yeah, we, must not yeah we, we did have to resist the temptation of simply reusing last year's slides uh, and read them 10 decibels louder, but um, we did find a few new things. We found a few new things uh, and mostly some things fall by the wayside. For example, if one, two years, maybe two years ago with a few scenarios you were able to say quite clearly you're crazy, that is completely unrealistic. What a conspiracy theory is that? Where's your tinfoil hat? Right? Now, that has gone. The day before yesterday, I was in a talk when I thought the people, the people talking there are really are from the tinfoil hat faction. But then I thought, well, that was clear two years ago. Now, you should stay sitting and, and, and keep your mouth shut because, well, next week, you know, never know what's going to be published. Which of you has no smartphone? Okay. Well, okay. That, that's that. And uh, how did you like the talk by Richard Storman? Richtig <laughs> good. Exactly. It was good, wasn't it? Yeah. Ich finde das ganz wichtig. Uh, I think that's quite important. I really enjoyed that uh, uh, because of the nice puns that very clearly had about Holland level in, in a few places. And then because, of course, it's very good for a reality check to see how he gets through life. And that's not the, I'm not judging it this way. I'm just saying that you can get through life this way as well. That's important to know. As a fallback, the banks used to previously... Uh, do they still do that? Do they still have paper records? Surely they do, yeah. Uh, in any way, uh, a few years ago, at least the large banks, once, once a year, they acted as if their computers would, wouldn't work. And uh, paper days, that would... Sometimes they don't have to act. That's what they tell the employees afterwards. Um, that was a <laughs> that was a test <laughs> to to see if their paper procedures still work. And it, it is actually quite interesting to do the same thing in private life to see if a, a day or a whole week is possible without smartphone. Without a mobile phone is actually quite difficult. Without smartphone, it might actually work. <laughs> Sony does that for, a, for one week, someone said. Sony had to do that, had, had to switch back to paper procedures. It can happen to you any time. Not the zombie apocalypse, but the paper apocalypse could come. Or the XP apocalypse. Who of you is still responsible for XP excellence installations at home? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Who knows someone who is still responsible for an XP installation? Who knows someone who works in a company that is still using XP? Oh, oh dear. Oh, oh, oh. We do need a laser-controlled hand counter or something. Uh, something you can insert in the left corner of the image. Um, right. Where were we? 
Die Rückschau. Starten wir mit der Rückschau. Look back. Let's start with looking back from 10 years ago. 10 years ago we were here and told stories at 21C3. We talked about superworms and maybe thought that uh, the, the few, the first worms that reinstall their operating system to then run abstract code on top of that. First of all, drop, then load Emacs, and then code. Da kommen wir gleich zu. Uh, we'll come to that, yeah. someone in yeah, response to some interjection. So that didn't quite happen yet, but we also had, we should have changed the order because we talked about mobile, mobile bot nets. What, 10 years ago was a bit far out. I think that roughly we said that we'd have to wait for it for a while because that was Symbian, the Symbian age, wasn't it? Because we had a few instances where we said this is going to start pretty soon but, and it was a bit, uh, uh, it didn't quite get going and it was never quite clear. Uh, it wasn't quite the right ecosystem yet. Uh, the mobile phone technology just wasn't, hadn't come that far, but the market, the market is of course delivering now. Uh, it's not the worm with its own operating system, but the operating system with a worm at the point of delivery in the mobile, in the phone. Next item, toll collect from the 10 years ago review. That's the toll system on the German motorways. So there was talk about a, a kind of toll for private cars. It essentially, it was just about lorries. And the response was always, no, no, the Automobile Association would be up in arms. It's never going to happen. And they didn't, they had a huge scandal this year, the German AA, but no, that's a conspiracy theory. That wasn't to install the toll on private cars. No. It's actually being discussed now in German politics. So biometrics, right? Biometrics then, we were quite far ahead there with biometrics 10 years ago. It really only really got started then and we asked ourselves will that be accepted will that permeate every light switch every door handle will that want a fingerprint is it all about the passports or uh, when is it really going to take off telephones with fingerprint reader that was something that well that was a kind of sleeve that you could attach and uh, that would then read the fingerprint or have a fingerprint reader. And then there were laptops with fingerprint readers. And uh, then we all realized that for two years they would work and then no longer because the sensor gets broke from all that goo that you have on your finger. Um, and then it kind of got uh, fell asleep and it was a marginal phenomenon apart from the passports, of course which they did try to introduce and in science fiction of course it was always great for a gag for a joke uh, where was it where demolition man demolition man thank you we'll come to that later by the way very recommended movie you know yeah yeah and then uh, reality check and jetzt haben die ersten Urteile we have zu the dem first Thema. judgments on, on, on it now, which should clarify whether biometrics has come all the way or not. Technically, of course, it's it's past, it's over. You've seen the Starbucks talk, or if you haven't, you should try it. But this year, there was the first judgment in the US where um, they explained that a password uh, to not reveal a password is okay, to have suddenly forgotten it, that's all right, which in Britain it is not the case, but in the US it's all right. But it's completely okay also to to put your hands on your back, and to put for law enforcement to put your hands on, on your back and then pass the telephone and, 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 and hold it there. And, but there are other instances in a person's life where maybe you would like to go back from biometrics to passwords. A Twitter, a tweet, I woke this morning, my finger on the touch ID center of my phone, maybe time to go back to passwords. 
Oh, sorry. Woke up this morning to find my seven-year-old delivering my finger onto the touch ID center of my phone. I was quite sure that Andreas Borg had tweeted that uh, he uh, was switching to, finger, to fingerprint sensors because his child uh, now also umgekehrt, can, shoulder surfen can, 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 can shoulder surf passwords now, but no longer, but not yet imitate fingerprints. So as a child safety procedure, it's probably still okay. Although this tweet is about a seven-year-old, I would add as a translator. Um, but well, maybe wait until they're 12 and 12 or 13. But we've seen it as a gap in the child's education. Actually, we saw that, not anything else. Yeah. Genau. Exactly. Sekundenkleber, ja. Uh, mm -hmm. Super glue. Yeah. <laughs> Wo du willst. Where you want. Abends den Sekundenkleber uh, drauf machen apply it in the evening and, and then get it off in the morning whilst you <laughs> wake up. No, maybe not. Um, then we thought uh, with uh, Zigbee there is still some room there. We're still looking for the nationwide standard for blinking lights on at the road level. Uh, I have a device now that in theory could speak Zigbee in my household, but that's about it. That it has no antenna. Which who of you has Zigbee at home? Who of you doesn't know what Zigbee is? That's including the translator. Clear. That makes it clear, I think. Yeah, mobile botnets. Mobile botnets. We were talking about. They happen. What, what you see between what what there is between us and full catastrophe is the battery, of course. And I don't know what to say. I always don't know what to say if a mobile user tells me that his battery is really, really short-lived and the telephone always gets so hot. I don't know. Should I say, well, put a new one in and if it doesn't improve things, maybe you've caught something? Or, whether, or should I reinforce people to buy something new because you know exactly because the thing they've bought hasn't had a software update in two years? That's questions of conscience. Who of you on their telephone has a, an operating system that was not shipped by the vendor? Cyanogen mod or something. And who of you has it because the maker, the vendor, doesn't deliver updates anymore? Oh, well, it's only 10%, but you are the avant-garde. Exactly. Network cars and surveillance cameras. Network cars was a bit slow going. Uh, didn't, not a lot happened there, but, well, uh, actually a lot has happened, but we're not seeing it yet. But I thought that eCar maybe next year would be passed. The, this eCall, the European system where every car has a chip that can call, place an emergency call automatically. And um, actually it makes it a tracking device. So we've been talking about this for three years maybe, and uh, maybe at some point we do have the mobile botnets that can actually drive. But the thing with the surveillance cameras, that was spot on. Uh, there was a really nice website, which was called ncam.com or something. Uh, someone is polling the internet for unsecured cameras and sorts them by geolocation according to countries and cities. And then you can directly click down to your own town and see what's, what can be seen there and uh, everything is there, right? Okay, we'll come to the cars later. Yeah. And Mac OS X, we did have a grace period or we called for the called that we said that the end of the grace period was near and and this year 
Apple zu Well, ersten Apple for the first time this year uh, uh, pushed a security update without user confirmation. Genau, das war yes, das war that was Geschichte, the story. If you were lucky, then at the upper right corner you saw an insert telling you, oh, by the way, we installed a software update and continue, there's nothing to see, move on. Uh, and you were not asked, uh, but a reboot. I'm talking about the default now, and uh, and there were no questions asked, it just ran through, but, but there was no reboot necessary anyway. And the surprising thing was that actually um, the lack of an outcry, if that had happened two years or three years ago, then that would have been a real alarm. And uh, well, now this it was like, well, it was probably necessary. Well, we are coming to the point where we have to ask ourselves what is actually better, patch things through without asking or give the user a choice, because which user can actually judge these things, decide these things? Apple, by the way, can do this, have been able to do this for two years, I think. <laughs> For 10 years. <laughs> 10 years ago. The next item, which is SSH, SSL, voice over IP, IM. I don't know whether we were thinking 10 years ago that it would be a continuing story. Um, but what the things that happened with voice over IP will come to that. There are some really nice things there. And then we thought 10 years ago, email the dead horse is what the slide says. We thought that with spam, no one will ever get to grips with that anymore. That has killed email and fax will be reintroduced at a large scale. And uh, well, I don't know. Um, who of you feels like they are in charge of a spam problem or in control? Ah, it's actually most of you. And who of you solves it alone? And who lets someone else solve it for them? Okay. All right. Yeah. Who has more than one call per month by parents because of strange emails and whether they should click on them? Yeah. Yes. Not so many. Not that many. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. 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 Okay, the right question would have been, how many of you get calls from their parents before they click on the link? And how many get the call afterwards? Okay. Okay. Good. That's internet right. normality the Internet Normality Update in 2014, we do have a few statistics each, each year. Uh, what we found? Um, denial of service, distributed denial of service with maximum uh, ba bandwidths of 500 gigabits per second. And uh, that is increasing rapidly. This year 500, last year 300, uh, the year before 550, uh, something like that. Because now, now there's more bandwidth available. Ich dachte mehr Opfer, die man I thought more, um, more, um, 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 more bots, the uh, Indus Reflection DDoS, yeah. It's uh, more a topic of bandwidth. Um, yeah. Und wie viel es davon gibt, genau. Und dann ist ja immer wieder, finde ich, find ich das sehr unterhaltsam, diese Studien zu machen. Und ich fand es sehr unterhaltsam, diese Studien zu machen. Und dann ist ein ganz tolles Zeug davor, dabei. Es ist wirklich großartig. Wir haben eine Studie berichtet von einer Schule. Wir haben eine Studie letztes Jahr berichtet, wo die Leute in England gefragt haben, wie viele Pounds die Leute die Leute würden uh, sell the company password 20 pounds and and how for how much they would uh, sell their Facebook password 50 pounds maybe and uh, there's uh, some other numbers how many people are using password manager 
to not uh, having to remember five uh, uh, complex passwords, five, 24% percent. Um, that's um, plus five percent uh, opposed to the last year. The average user in Germany has nine passwords, that's one more than last year. And what's that for? for the, well, it's not for the fridge. For the password manager. For the password manager. <laughs> Genau. Exactly. <laughs> Question from the. Does Facebook noch nicht in den Markt eingestiegen? Facebook ist, ne? hasn't entered that market. Interesting. Wer von euch würde denn seinen Facebook-Account sell use a Facebook account for SSH logins? Das hast du falsch gefragt. <laughs> you asked that wrongly. Okay. Um. Genau. Seven percent der Rechner. Seven percent of the computers in Germany have still use Windows XP. Rechner am Netz. Like net uh, computers on the internet. He correlates that uh, with the statistics here with uh, who uh, with com people who know people who use uh, companies with Windows XP. We sort of have a um, self-help group here. Ja, die Statistik ist Statistik ist uh, pretty nice, uh, made pretty, um, because that's only the computers you can see on the internet, like the computers that are used for surfing. 14% of German uh, employees have sent an encrypted email this year. Circa 25 oder About 25 percent uh, have uh, the capacities to do that. That means that 10 percent use it, but ne never use it. Could use it, but never use it. We are talking about end-to-end uh, -end encryption, not TLS. And 65 percent don't have the capacities. There's a lot to do there. How many people of these 7% uh, in Windows XP use uh, uh, companies? Uh, it's probably the ATMs. There's a, the other uh, statistics that 95% of all ATMs are still Windows XP. What also means, uh, vice versa, that we must have a lot of bank admins here. Genau. Also gibt es großartiges Zeug, zum Beispiel great stuff. For example, phishing mails uh, have been sent. Uh, like 120,000 people, uh, uh, they were attacked uh, from certain companies. 120,000 employees from certain companies were attacked with a uh, with a company log and everything. And the hit rate of a phishing mail on this external right uh, on the external website people who locked in were 20 percent and then had the study and the study die das Ding aufgemacht haben. Sie set up this company um, in verschiedene Gruppen. Uh, uh, set this and uh, uh, put the people into three uh, p uh, three categories. And uh, you will laugh your asses of the the idiots who uh, um, have. That's the people who uh, complain that they never got what they uh, what they uh, ordered online. Then there's the people who um, have quickly changed their password afterwards, and then on every hundred hundredth employee, uh, and um, only every hundredth uh, employee uh, notified the uh, the abuse uh, team of the company to uh, block the site. It me. It me. Who, uh, who of you has uh, their IPNI uh, exposed to the internet? This is this uh, server um, 
Management äh, Interface. Ich glaube, das von AMD heißt noch irgendwie anders. Das von AMD ist called different, like SSM or something. ILO? ILO? Ja, ILO, danke schön. Thank you. Und ähm, das ist And wohl that is, uh, A terrible massacre. 230.000 servers on the internet with 46% on IPM I, I 1.5 that uh, allows you admin access without password. Uh, see also uh, UEFI, BIOS catastrophes and stuff like that. Uh, everything really not funny. Die Verschlüsselungsverbindungen in der EU haben sich in der EU have quadrupled. Sie haben sich vervierfacht. Sie sind von 1,5 auf 6 Prozent. <lacht> genau. Ja, wow. Aber in Nordamerika ist es weniger. In Nordamerika ist es weniger. Da, dann hat mal jemand die ähm, CA-Zertifikate in Windows untersucht. Also, Let's have a look at the CA-Zertifikate in Windows. Zahl, ne? Also wie viele CAs sind in Windows dann eigentlich? How many CAs in, are there actually in Windows? Mehr vertrauenswürdige Stellen kann es doch auf diesem Planeten gar nicht geben, more than oder? More than a dozen. There can't be more than a couple of trustworthy companies. 377. 377. Davon haben 148, 148 nie of them have never issued have never issued an HTTP SSL certificate on the base of 48 million million SSL certificates have been yeah and it's code signing CAs and so have haven't been counted but the rate is like 48 million und um, was normalerweise unter Bemerkenswertes gefallen wäre und was What wir heute we would have been called noteworthy, but we moved it into the normality update. Um, how long have some uh, malware campaigns have been running? Was meint ihr von What do you think drei, the mask dark hotel and Hakon? What do you think? Wie viele davon laufen länger als drei Jahre? Running longer than three years. Seid ihr der Meinung, alle von denen laufen länger als drei Jahre? Do you Jahre? think more, all of them are running more than three years? Die jüngste davon, the also die, die, die of die them, läuft, läuft fünf Jahre. Is running five years. Fünf. Five. Und, und die älteste von denen? Und die Na, wer, wer, wer gibt mehr als zehn? Wer gibt mehr als more zehn Jahre? Jemand mehr als zehn Jahre? Ja, yeah, more than 10 years. 20? Ne, 12. 12 years. 12, ne? the, the Mask 5, Dark Hotel 7, Harkon 12. The Mask 5, Dark Hotel 7 and Harkon also 12 years. Yes. Their children born, that yeah. were bo weren't born when this malware was deployed. <laughs> genau. Uh, oh wow. Ja. Yeah. Und oh, das ist uh, sind durchaus... Uh, and that uh, is actually uh, really interesting. The Mask, the mask uh, Malware Rootkit, uh, Bootkit, um, Version, auf version Linux und for Linux OS. and Mac OS, uh, 400, System 400 systems in 31 states, uh, one states infected, um, uh, and uh, the study was, published, uh, was published, and uh, the command and control service were for Four hours later, they were offline. Also da ist jemand äh, schnell dabei. There is someone really fast. Dark Hotel. Um, Dark Hotel. Das war ja dieses äh, Leute angreifen. There was this attack people äh, who uh, uh, enter a hotel network. Das wurde immerhin That noch was, gemacht. Uh, die Angreifer mit im selben Hotel. The das attackers were in the same hotel. Check my trip oder ähnliche Geschichten. That was oder done by Facebook check my trip or Facebook status thing and they. Uh, eingebucht, also da ist eine vor Ort Komponente There was, uh, you know, that was in the uh, same uh, place uh, and uh, Harkonnen has nothing like being in the second network and 300 companies have been attacked in the last 12 years. Uh, in order to, that's the most interesting part, in order to attack these 300 companies, they uh, got themselves proper SSL certificates and in order, in order to pro get proper SSL certificates and 
And in order to uh, get the proper domains, they founded 800 different companies. Das ist schon ganz schön sportlich. And that is, well, that's pretty good. Cool. Cool. So looking back, China 2014, last year, well, China, they're kind of fed up, they've like discontinued Windows 8, they've provided and antivirus. So, but the point is, why are they actually doing this? Well, this is probably because they saw Rudy's uh, slides before before his talk here. Or Linux rootkit. Or did they just steal uh, Symantec's source code? Or even read it? <laughs> or sort of local industry support? The... the Liberation Army writing writing antivirus programs possibly. Ja, Russland schreibt so, schreibt äh, Kohle aus um Russia is actually putting putting money on on de -anonym, anonymizing tool, so giving the US money base versus. So, <laughs> so this this may be it might be a red herring. Says someone in in, in the audience. So in defense of my my hometown. Von WLAN in Hamburger Schulen zu stoppen. A couple of guys managed to, to stop um, Wi-Fi in, in, in Hamburg schools. That was a nice story, but hey. Dafür gab es äh, Deutschland sicher im Netz. But what we did Und, have is Deutschland sicher im Netz. Uh, Germany sort of safe online campaign. Um, was was anyone there uh, at the presentation where where the event? where the campaign was like evaluated, it sounded a bit like hopeless, so, sort of self-confirmation, how, how secure is Germany in sort of e-government uh, net security, and then you call the TÜV, the German uh, industry, a norm control <laughs> service, that's the kind of attitude, yeah, that's understandable, every German car needs the little, little plaque to uh, telling you, um, what, that it meets all the all the all the necessary requirements, and yeah, the same mentality obviously applies to your computer. So for the the information highway, obviously. So <laughs> if, if the whole Snowden revelations hadn't happened, happened in that form, well, maybe there would have been. Uh, you, you could just assume that the state is installing the back door. Well, this is the kind we're assuming that the, that the government is the, <laughs> the institution that, that's actually, well, Supposed to install trust and um, provide this kind of security in, in the net network. And if you have like the, <laughs> I mean, imagine there is not even a, a, the slightest remnant of, of trust left. I mean, imagine the um, the the German criminal. Police or or, or um, control, you know, coming to your door and and asking, can we just check how how secure your computer is? So this is not exactly the institutions we trust, the BS uh, BSE security, the the, the German um, board for um, security and in, in information technology. Um, so PM index was was leaked. Indexed by the German institution checking the youth compatibility of media. So these had actually been discontinued for the past past four years. We're not actually 
quite sure what these these lists are for, but uh, we just heard that the CCC actually made it at least to the UK list. Uh, we got tri tripped up in their in their porn filter. We're not quite sure why. Um, what would was there a porn so, firm attached or oh oh no sorry we were we were actually political terrorist extremists oh. extremist <laughs> propaganda hmm well <laughs> comments from the floor that the naked bits were too were too you know <laughs> not too for all eyes <laughs> and also there was a maybe a porn company um in competition the three letter acronym, acronym ccc we always thought maybe that's just the the caribbean crab fishers association or something but there's a porn <laughs> company maybe as well so regan hat also irgendjemand beschlossen es zu wenig i in diesem government so the whole government has too little of the e government in particular on a european level so all these campaigns are just kind of preparation, you know, for total world domination, obviously. So, but what what you do need is a sort of general uh, base or consensus from between different countries. So, uh, if you're just making individual tweaks to 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 systems, well, that's the kind of shortcut to to AI. Maybe <laughs> you can just get all machine readable, just government data compiled, maybe. That's a kind of, that's my kind of theory, what we need is like, maybe an open data interface, the machine readable government, governments in that case. World government dot nine alpha. Yeah, na ja, good. Well, okay. It it wasn't that pretty. I think I think for the, that's the end of the story. We're just exchanging our our keys. Um, something else, you know, open VPN, open SSL. But what's more interesting in the crypto cryptocalypse is the true crypt sense well nothing popped up there anymore did it it wasn't certainly wasn't north korea and yeah the the recommendation was like yeah why don't you just change to bitlocker we hope that wasn't a serious recommendation a uh, question at uh, mike one from the floor well, there was a crowdfunding was there for the audit of true crypts slightly before the project was abandoned and that went through and and it, there was a rather successful audit. Well, as far as I understand, there were two stages, and the first stage we showed that some sloppiness, but uh, everything okay. And wasn't the st second stage still in process, uh, in progress? Uh, I don't know. Does anyone know? It's still running. It's still going on. Yeah, everyone's. <laughs> everyone agrees. The project's been abandoned, the audit goes on. Um, it, it is one of the more interesting myths or, or riddles, enigmas, surely. Or does anyone know anyone who um, knows what happened there? Yeah, well, that's where the microphones are. So, data crime. Um, we did want to shed a few words about um, the fappening and the snappening. And we think, I think that we learned about two things there that were quite interesting. There were the people that had that found those naked celebrity photos or exchanged those that the people exist, uh, swap those, it must be a small, illustrious circle. And then these people then probably have access to state-of-the-art uh, forensic software because uh, the whole thing 
Uh, all the specialized companies, of course, have had their software go astray and, um, you know, and the question is surely how next to all the moral aspects that we had in the chaos review already a bit, the interesting question is what is the thing with liability, vendor liability? Because somehow it's not easy to understand, uh, despite all the victim blaming that there was, uh, you shouldn't, people saying, why should you put your naked pictures in the cloud? That's very unrealistic, isn't it? Of course, your own fault if you take a naked picture. Is that envy or what? I don't think that's how it works. That's not how it works. If we, if we communicate this way, then as a society, we should accept that and think who is actually to blame here. And those that are to blame, surely, those that are to blame are those that haven't secured the data properly. If you hear that Apple is not able to um, uh, resist a brute force attack or a, a define a threshold for brute force attacks and shut it out after, off after a few attempts, that's not acceptable. Uh, what are you supposed to do? Uh, or does that look perhaps like a gap in the law? Uh, how do you define the damage, actually? Uh, that is a question I would dealt with a bit more intensely. Uh, liability, uh, is there something that should be done, uh, especially for service operators? Um, should there be a bit, a bit more pressure to really for them to really look after the data? And how do you define and monetize the loss if data like this is is lost or copied and i tend towards a more radical suggestion maybe we should uh, um, align this to the damages that you get in front of german courts if the build citing the famous german tabloid publishes your images and you soon get into the five or six digits here and that seems like an appropriate kind of damage if your images for example in a, in a cloud store uh, um, are promised to be looked after safely and then they suddenly do get published and uh, that should really hurt them a lot and not just with a weird, oh, sorry, um, you know. So you need, you need to take care, of course, to not prize small startups out of the market completely, small startups, and leave it to the big companies to offer such services. But what is clear, the way it is now, where there is no responsibility and a few shrugging of shoulders uh, and, well, you have this credit card monitoring report and a psychologist for, for, the, uh, for mental... Uh, injury, that's not enough, there must be more responsibility and that might lead to the to the to to a place where these, these services actually cost money and are not financed by ads. So remarkable, what's remarkable? I know this is going to shock you but we've brought a picture, an image and that is a picture of from from the wild uh, of a data center. Was that supposed to be a data center? The first one-time password as a service. So what you see there, for those that don't understand, you see at this cardboard, you see these one password tokens, which every minute show a new password uh, to log into the server with, which normally you should carry in your key ring. And, and here they put them up on a shoe box and place them in front of a webcam. And this webcam, this webcam was not protected with a password. I 
Ich finde es ein sehr schönes Cloud Service. I think that was a very nice Cloud Service. Yes. Uh, also, um, it's in the tradition. Uh, it's a new step in the Nets evolution. Uh, last year we laughed about the person that. Uh, den, der seinen eigenen Job who, in der um, für die er gearbeitet hat, outgesourced hat. outsourced his own job in his company and the one-time password generator uh, was sent to someone in India. Yeah. Was it Vietnam, India, China, whatever? Someone who did the job for him. When I thought, why is he FedExing things there if you could put a camera there? Um, because that's exactly what the MIT did about 10 years ago. Well, full circle. <clears throat> anyway, uh, there have been many changes of passwords this year. All kinds of people have noticed it was in the papers that you should change your passwords several times. Uh, first, 16 million addresses had gone astray, then how many, and then 145 million at eBay, and then uh, the, t the topic of firmware updates, um, a new popular updating, um, half of Germany's routes are by AVM or something, and now everyone knows what a firmware update is, which is good. Yeah, that was a pretty professional deal. So they were do, putting putting these updates out, um, things that uh, been out for maybe 30 years. So actually, well done. But what's 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 maybe notable or about the password business, the kind of religious spirit and zeal that um, this this password change is is like practiced in and at least like in a certain frequency and don't use the same one again obviously you're not allowed to write it on a piece of paper don't install the password manager ich meine, wenn man solche Bedingungen hat, and ich like so the conditions get more and more, and so what 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 do you end up with? Well, maybe Sony would have been happier with that kind of policy, <laughs> or maybe it was just too simple. But so so we were actually thinking in general: is it isn't it is it isn't it wrong to like find a negative? definitions and rules and regulations. Don't do this. You must not use lowercase letters only. Or maybe we should make positive incentives. You get a number of jelly babies if you use uh, a character and whatever hieroglyphs. Or you could make a like m m worker of the month, <laughs> employee of the month kind of award for the Prettiest password. <laughs> What? What? Comments. Well, obviously, I have to print out the password for to to participate in the award. So remember, in the in the GDR, in these old state, <laughs> uh, whatever agricultural companies or something, and you could always see the yeah these. You know, awards and garlands for particularly well-behaved employees to, to that achieve the norm, the production norm, etc. So we had this 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 anecdote about um, a hospital where I, the IT was just disappeared entirely. <laughs> So um, it was a story where he just attached his, <laughs> his computer to the, to the Ethernet, and the whole the whole hospital basically had a had a total IT meltdown. So, but there are these there are these kind of occasions. In the US, there was an audit in in a hospital. So uh, they just took another look. 
and then they did the larger audit, and then they basically just shut the whole place down. No, oh, oh no, sorry, I, I was lying. No, of course they have no idea. Das muss ein totaler Vollausfall gewesen sein. Also nicht im Sinne von, dass da was ausgefallen ist, sondern das Ergebnis war ein totaler Vollausfall bei den Medizingeräten. So, the result of the audit with the Ethernet Schnitt with all the medical equipment that was used, 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 that And the thing was that there was no like technical distinction between like a printer and a maybe a device which will give you an intravenous injection. <laughs> well, you know, the things you shouldn't do when you're in hospital, like NMAP, <laughs> don't use NMAP. Warum kümmert ihr euch alle um Banken und so um Internetshops we, we were listening to this, to this talk, the, the, the speaker was saying, why are you also concerned about this sort of security, about celeb, you know, selfie, nudies? So there's like things in the industry that mix physical things and uh, why, where it's really bad if it gets too warm or the wrong thing gets into the mixed with each other and why are you, aren't you looking at these kind of things? And the, uh, um, and the answer would be like, yeah, they're not, uh, yeah, there's the steel work that has been uh, broken. Um, uh, well, the thing you know about in the net is wasn't an, a targeted attack. It was um, uh, they, they got a, just like some sort of sort of worm and then f broke down. And well, they, no, the other uh, Ron says now they had uh, run Nmap and that isn't riskless. Uh, yeah, you get a bad feeling in the stomach. Then we ha used to have a category. For the interesting, uh, most interesting um, uh, error malware routines, and this uh, uh, in the category fun uh, with embedded, uh, embedded devices, I think Dogecoins uh, to to mining. Dogecoins on uh, Synology uh, wins. So Synologies are these kind of hard disk cubes uh, where you don't want to administer a RAID. Uh, you run this kind of thing at home uh, and then you wonder why it runs hot. The first uh, phone that was cheap enough uh, uh, where the provider didn't uh, have anything um, uh, less to, uh, else to, left to do than uh, built in a uh, virus. Uh, so that's the monetization of hardware. Um, uh, and that's only the logical uh, extension of uh, um, advertising finance uh, services. And some the internet is saying that a vast home edition now vast protects you from viruses coming through HTTP TTPS via the internet. Um, but Kapersky had uh, uh, also had a problem uh, with opening emails and stuff like that. Yeah. Then, uh, uh, um, yeah, USB. bad USB. Who of you, of you bought the USB sticks, USB sticks uh, in order to use them just once? Browser, you you are all mutig. Yeah. You are wer, wer courageous. Who has the who has closed the USB uh, ports and a computer with uh, with wer, wer the glue? Who has um, mixed uh, glitter uh, uh, from their daughters just in order to notify that if someone else puts the glue in there and changes it? Huh? Yeah, it's, with it's difficult. Then, so, it's difficult also with the data. Also, um, so, well, you're not afraid from bad of, about 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 and I, well, then I know what the Congress uh, plague is going to be next year. Now, next year, the entry card is going to be a USB stick. Do you take it?
<lacht> Nächstes Jahr ist Next der Eintritt year, frei. The entry is going to be free. Und, und wir versteigern we, uh, Stick, uh, and yeah, we will just uh, auction off the rights to uh, deliver this USB stick. And on the camp there will be a rocket, now you say it. Well, we, we have not, don't have enough time, that's going to be a bit short. Uh, does anybody have uh, details uh, about this pre predictive policing things in uh, Northern Westphalia and Bavaria? I just heard that Anna Northern Westphalia wants to do something or have started something, and I heard something they, that they did something totally. Um, um, ah, they no no they. They started it uh, really successfully, and they um, they cleared up three uh, three um, uh, burglaries thanks um, uh, more this year. So predictive policing. This um, the predictive policing thing is a, a st weak start, and it's about big data for the police and the attempt to. Um, to notify, notice when um, the less, uh, how, how to how to find out uh, how to where to send the policemen who are getting less and less, um, and uh, uh, yeah, buildings that aren't protected by people anymore, but only by computers. And we'll get to the point. Uh, I need to say it now. And you have these computer and artificial intelligence systems by the uh, bo government bodies, and they try to find out where you want to break in next, uh, and they find out where who broke in, where, when, why, and people return. And on the other hand, you have Google Now. And, and Google Now, and Google now sees um, he was there and there, and there who was there in San Jose. And then he was at the police station. And the users patterned the pattern uh, who was there and then there. And, and tells them, well, you're going to have a date at the police station next. I don't think it would be that they uh, sell the data to Amazon and uh, offer you a new. Uh, uh, liver, uh, what do you call him? Um, Titanium crowbar. Cry crowbar, exactly. Thanks. Um, yeah. Dazu müssen wir gar nichts mehr sagen. We don't have to say anything anymore. Okay, we don't have to say anything more about this. I don't know. Let's try this password. Holy shit. Yeah. Attributen, attribution is hard. Let's Attrib go shopping. Attribution is hard. Let's go shopping. Genau. <laughs> ja. Yeah. Yeah, der war gut. Die, yeah. der, der, der was good. The first antivirus program that looks if your router is up to date. Und and sehen wir diesen Trend we can auch, see this uh, trend uh, uh, in corporate in the corporate area, where uh, in more interesting, more interesting malware is uh, installed for your security on your work computer. Um, es besteht there is no there is no harm for this um, danger for the uh, um, uh, for the public. For the public, please, please move on. on. First said Symantec when they had 40% uh, revenue or uh, winnings with antivirus, they said, then now they say antivirus is dead. And uh, now others say that have the idea that you shouldn't uh, care about the local computer, but also about the network. Uh, that's actually quite a good idea. And this was the first software that actually looks who is the default router and uh, is it actually quite is still OK. And this is the default home version. And then it just uh, looks if there's a, the router is known and if it has a firmware problem. So um, what you see in companies is that in company, uh, companies 
don't really do their inventory management or don't trust the inventory management anymore, where they, they have these vulnerability tools uh, to check whether all that they find is actually known to them. And, and, what, and this now is the first, as far as I've seen, the first product that uh, actually does something of the kind that the enterprise market has in the home, in the domestic area. And uh, the thing is that there are they do what people always do. They, they scan the whole network and then tell you that's, that, that there's the router there that needs a certain patch and then find something else. And there are some nice examples. Uh, if you take this AVM thing that came that went through last year, there was this nice router test that was published by Heiser, the well-known German magazine. And uh, people were calling Kaiser and saying, well, I've patched my router and I still see that window pop up. Uh, what's broken there? And it turned out they had forgotten, long forgotten that on the AVM they had a Wi-Fi repeater as well, right? Yeah, hey. So, hey, you put you plug that in and it configures itself and you just forget about it. It's completely understandable as a problem. And uh, if an antivirus software then comes along and says, uh, antivirus is dead, what else can I do? And I'll scan the network and explain people that, to people that their TV uh, uses a lot of bandwidth c communicating with the outside then that's not completely wrong. But the question then is, who controls all that forensic malware? Uh, are we now building a nice little pyramid? Um, you have two, three console workplaces with the uh, uh, US management and, and government live forensics, so what's the correct term, which uh, controls everything? And actually, you don't have to start uh, putting people, placing people in co in companies, it's all there already. You just have to repurpose the software. I think that's all, uh, this is all a big plan and uh, no one's noticing yet. And the next, well, a nice example for hardware that has become cheap enough by now to run new attacks uh, was the thing with the infrared cameras to spy on pins on credit card terminals with those rubber keyboards. And these rubber keyboards are great because if you press keys on there, one, two, three, on all, all that, and take an infrared image, then you can see exactly which keys were pressed in which order, which was first and second because the warmth is stored so well. And the camera that you need for that is so small that you can put it behind your telephone and you look like someone uh, standing next to you taking a selfie, nothing more. And I find that very interesting. Uh, all those authentication technologies, one after the other, are breaking down. Exactly. And uh, another nice thing, was the Anunnak bank robbery, uh, where they uh, allegedly uh, opened 50 banks in Russia, various payment systems, siphoned off $50 million. It started with the infection of an employee's PC, and then they, had, they took 42 days on average, I, I don't know, to get through to the cash machines. And do you know this this cash machine, how you can touch it in terms of software to make it a payment terminal, to turn it into that? You can't just tell it, well, open the flap now and, and put the money out. That's not possible, at least not with most devices. But what is possible, actually, is the order of to change the ordering of banknotes in those cassettes from which the money is dispensed. And they went and said, well, give me 10, 50 ruble notes, and you got 10, 500 ruble notes, or something like that. Microphone 1. 
Maybe before we start getting too depressive, uh, a positive development that I noticed in 2014, I don't know if, uh, it's, if it comes under government data crime or remarkable, and I've forgotten the English term as well. It's the phenomenon in the Anglo-American area uh, and the Lada Levison case. Uh, there was a lot of talk about national security letters, and, and that was the canary uh, yeah, that is the English term, actually. The Warren Canary, canary. yeah, exactly, the Warren can can Canary, sorry. Uh, so that was was rather inventive in terms of variants. There, there were many variants. So the way it works is you put something on your website saying, we haven't had any requests from the NSA for this or that. And if you suddenly stop having that on, your web on the website, you know that something's happened. It's a very, very commendable development. Microphone two, please. Uh, about the bank robbery, do you know where that came from with the uh, money cassettes? Uh, we had that three years ago when some teenies in the US uh, read or found the instruction manuals for cash machines and went to their petrol station, filling station, and the, used the standard password in those manuals. Uh, change things around in, the, in that cassette via the pin pad. So $20 turned to $200, took out the money, changed things back and did that for quite a long time, for months, until someone forgot to change things back. And then there was a party in the village. Operational security is hard. Good. Right. <clears throat> So what did we say? We will play elevator music while we do this? Yes, elevator music. Uh, let it run for about five seconds so everyone has time to take a photo of this. Or, um, and then we'll do the next one. And then we'll wait another five seconds. Uh, wait for the laughter. And then go on. Right. Die Stichworte für Keywords for 2015. Evil hardware, which equals software, it doesn't really matter anymore. Uh, patches without con confirmation is something we touched upon. And, uh, we'll, I think we'll see that the conflict here or the debate um, will probably reach its climax. I think as an industry we did something wrong. We, in the sense of the industry, and we the power users, did something wrong. Because this model that I want to know what happens on my machine, and that means I want to know when patches arrive and I want to knock them off one by one and lead, read the knowledge base articles and all that, we transferred that and told everyone to do that. And everyone should be able to do that. And, you know, that then for years we took all those calls, you know, when the families were calling and uh, here we have E underscore 32 underscore something wants to access the internet, yes or no. And still we didn't really notice the impacts and now things are starting with the first vendors daring, or oh, actually we should beat them to it, to, to, to do it, um, because most people cannot judge whether things are okay or not, and that's why these patches shouldn't leave. Uh, uh, simply should go through to ask someone is actually senseless and even dangerous. I didn't say yes, I didn't dare, you know. So, damn, this was an operating system patch for your Java. If you can't switch it off, then you'd have to patch immediately. So, who of you this year was able to uh, kill a Java installation in their families? That's always a good feeling, isn't it? Right? So, but um, 
Natürlich wollen course, wir in der Lage sein, we want to be able to uh, have a registry key and to, to switch these things off and tell the system that we want to be asked. But do we want that for the broad masses? I think that is the question that you do have to ask now. Microphone two. Exactly, that's what I wanted to say. I am with you here for the broad masses. It would be better if these things just went through. And asking is superfluous, but you're, because your background just simply cannot answer or decide whether to click yes or no. But we should very tightly uh, take care that there still is a registry switch. Every feature you can't turn off is a bug. But I do ask uh, how the industry is supposed to implement this demand. Is it supposed to, is it going to tell people? Well, we can give, put you into the first wave of patches and then the product is cheaper. Or whether they'll say, well, just five dollars more and you'll get into the first group that will receive the first version, the new version. What? what? Come with Windows 10. Come with Windows 10. Well, that will come with Windows 10, someone says. Micro 1. Microphone 1. Well, if, if we talk about this Apple incident, then of course, where no one really get, got upset for the lack of confirmation, but there was this, this other shitstorm of considerable proportion when for an ad campaign, I think there was this U2 song, actually it was a full album, uh, where they uploaded it without asking, and that created that great uh, Twitter storm or social media storm. Well, you know, uh, let me say, well, between an NTP patch and and a Bono song, um, I wouldn't know what to get excited or upset about there, yes. Did you did you see the Internet of Toilets talk? Also, this Internet of Things, no? Well, the, the whole uh, Internet of Things business. Like, there's always being suggested that it's mainly about like, having your your fridge and your washing machine wor working at the right time. Or, in energy, more energy efficient ways, but um, maybe it's going to going to develop in an entirely different way. So every little light bulb or light switch and every end gadget has its own IP address. Every little switch and so you, I think you're involved in these like home automation debate. Forums. But these are quite like brave people who are who are experimenting with with the future, and even when it's quite messy and bloody, still. But we literally don't don't know what's what's going to be uh, what's going to be the end of this development. So, for instance, who actually controls the the data that that's that's comes comes together here or are they ending up in a, in a cloud or with a kind of e-government so that means basically in the internet of things everything is a sensor everything is phoning from calling home and even if it doesn't look like a sensor as soon as you have an IP address it, you can have a transmitter function and you have to look at it um, to you look at it I have to look at the thing itself to see what what kind of what what kind of transmitter can that can that be you can have for instance in the UK they have um garbage garbage bins they, they look at Wi-Fi MAC addresses uh, in the environment <laughs> moving moving through uh, how fast are uh, people moving nearby similar things so 
hat bei seinem Telefon so eine Software, ein, äh, also die Firmware geändert, dass wenn, wenn so der first SSIDs fragt, people nach, started nach arranging their, their phones that uh, to have, have a similar have a similar function to, to change the MAC address. But um, if you if you look at the the objects in in detail, maybe that's that's not the issue. The question is, who are we we collecting this data for? What's gonna what's gonna happen with all these results? So, um, my hypothesis is that it's not actually like for for humans, but for for AI maybe to to evaluate. So because this is just so enormous amounts of data, this is only something you can look at in a machine learning term, so there's not much to, to learn from your own objects talking to you, talking back to you. Und, um, sagen auch nicht so richtig, wo sie damit hinwollen, sondern es sickert so ganz langsam so, rein. Google and Facebook and then they don't really know why, where they're doing, what are they going to, well, what are they going to do with all this? data it just trickles trickles down in a kind of subtle subtle way <laughs> very narrow and it's not how 9000 clearly so these these objects can can learn a lot about you maybe the, the smart watches or um assess your schedule from from your behavior around uh, so looking at these these watches the the way they're they're supplied so is quite irritating because basically your watch is suggesting to you that it's smarter than you actually are and will display that uh, which it considers relevant in in that in that moment and maybe that's a sort of indicator of where this this may be going so if your your sensor is like smarter about your own life and then then you are that's the kind of assumption behind that so still keeping the ai in big air quotes we're still on a very basic pattern pattern matching level it's not the electronic brain that's literally thinking about your schedule and the the logistics and a representation of your your life reality in the machine so that's not really the case yet but i mean you can still do it on a on a on a broader on a more general scale Take a, something like an event here, 12,000 people are doing this, uh, of which 4,000 have been doing that. So this is still a, a game on a more basic pattern, pattern matching level. And obviously the way is to, to, to <laughs> make the machine learn something as well and keep telling it, no, your assumptions are actually wrong. Ja, ich denke, 2015 werden wir ziemlich viel über autonome Fahrzeuge. So, um, um, we're expecting to hear quite a bit more about the whole autonomous driving discussion. Um, cars and vehicles. We're not actually aware that all this is already done now. So, technically ready and in, in place, really. So German, German producers, uh, yeah, just tick all the boxes for all the assistance uh, systems. Uh, uh, that's the the meta class. So um, the only thing really preventing us from ha having uh, entire areas of, of motorways where where you can really just rely on autonomous driving, this kind of assisted. Well. Es halt nur It's more, more practical hat. terms is just um, that the steering mechanisms aren't yet prepared to let you take your hands off the wheel. So we can just. Und das Zweite, was dann noch fehlt, we can just let go. Mit, ähm, mit dem But the right idea would be to have like the hands grasping the steering wheel as a kind of extra ähm, accessory. <laughs> Dahin kommt, überlasse ich mal lieber dem geneigten Leser. Bevor ich
Ärger mit dem Kraftfahrzeugbundesamt bekommen. Yeah, you will, uh, so I, we'll I, all I be in trouble. We, we'll all be in trouble with the, so, the authorities the with the current license. So we'll uh, link the hardware to the nets, and there's uh, still a potential for monetization, I think. We had uh, recently we had uh, this topic about the dark net, dark hotel, sorry, and where people were attacked while they were in the hotel because they uh, logged into a non. Uh, trustworthy network and this network was uh, attacked beforehand by, uh, who, by people who wanted bad things from these people. This thing is um, an example where the technology that was used by uh, military or spies then moves towards um, business to business and then, and then attacks to everybody. I think the next step will be, um, uh, that's uh, also a uh, business model of the future where someone comes and says, Liebe, dear hotel, I offer you internet uh, for, every, for all your customers for free. And the, the details that they open up uh, all the SSL connections and save everything that goes over there, uh, that uh, is monetization. Gibt's schon? This one ex already exists. Ja, ich meine, wenn ich so gucke, was irgendwie in manchen Hotels so los ist, uh, da frage ich mich auch schon so, ob es da nicht so einen gewissen Konkurrenzkampf sogar gibt. I think if I look at certain hotels, I wonder if there isn't, isn't a isn't the uh, you know what kind of uh, business models uh, concurring systems have they all have i was in a hotel recently with four different providers they all had their different the infrastructure i didn't use anybody of them any one of them the next one is vpn for this for vpn provisors well then use uh, for pay vpn and then you use a VPN service, then you're on the list of uh, services, uh, on the list of people who use VPN services, I don't know. That's is Captain Obvious, yeah? That's ca uh, Captain Obvious, um, uh, who everybody who, who was on the uh, talk of to, from Tobias and Carsten, they know that SS7, uh, there was SS5, and and then after that there will be LTE diameter and then will that will uh, you know accompany us for a couple of years das thema und was the topic and if you add this up then you will be within the old category that we had uh, didn't have uh, for a couple of years now but uh, this is the corporate city states uh, topic the corporate corporate city states are from these uh, all, uh, to Bruce Stur Sterling William Gibson um, uh, novels and uh, Demolition Man, you should have have a look at Demolition Man again, because Demolition Man was the first larger uh, Hollywood film where there was a smart city. Who, who, from you, who of you knows the movie? Too, too little. Uh, we will ask you next year, have a look at it. Um, yeah, homework assignment? Huh? Yeah? Yeah, Sylvester Stallone can man ignore. You can ignore Sylvester Stallone, and he was pretty young there, so. Es gibt, also da gibt's, gibt's sehr interessante features. Also, interest, very interesting features, uh, automatic. Um, genau, es gibt automatische Abwehr von diesem und jedem, und ansonsten achtet auf die drei Muscheln. Uh, automatic Abwehr, uh, uh, defense of this and that, and also have a look, just look at the three shells and. Uh, and the, um, I, I like the uh, ticket printers at the uh, at every wall. If you, if you um, um, swear or do use offensive language, there's a, a, a ticket comes out there. So yeah, they can have a pretty good look at what happens there in such a such a, a smart city. So everybody thinks like, yeah, in the smart city, everything is green and nice, and, and everybody wants to go. There. Is it directed and where where they can go? But what is behind it is actually the, the confluence of three con concepts. First of all, everything is a sensor. We have a lot of data. 
Second is we all have a strange uh, device in our pockets where we can receive messages. And the third is the conviction that uh, someone knows it better. Uh, at the end, uh, probably a piece of software that uh, is responsible for people doing things uh, that is are smart. A f easy example is, uh, for example, um, no one knows um, that uh, there's, you know, there's a. Uh, if you know that there's a um, a lot of traffic, then a smart city can uh, can um, add up the or uh, um, extend the cost of parking and. Um, and uh, make sure that the um, and make make sure that the uh, public transport ticket is uh, cheaper. That that's called nudging. There you le lead people to do the right thing, and this is um, um, the promise of this. But uh, what's behind this is a very um, cybernetic socialism um, that tries to know everything better. But I always remember this. Uh, uh, re eat uh, more spinach because there's like um, a lot of iron in it and this was um, a dogma for 30 years but they, uh, until they found out that there was a comma that uh, was in the right and uh, the wrong spot and uh, there's not now that much iron in it and did you notice that Google wants to help you with um, uh, voting? Everybody, who have you used the Valomat, which is a German uh, sort of uh, hint to learn uh, what to vote? And uh, there's a data driven, yeah, we have a data driven uh, audience. Um, so, data, data Valomat just uses uh, a little pattern matching, but with a little semantic analysis um, and with. Um, um, yeah, you could, uh, if you do a little more big data, because uh, you could also uh, just use uh, the Valomat where Google thinks you uh, should do it, you know, uh, smart politics. Right. And, uh, okay, back to artificial intelligence at the level of corporate city-states, 0.9 or less. Uh, there will be the question at some point, what has AI known at what point? Oh, well, we keep having that in politics, don't we? Who knew what, when, and told whom, when? And if you look at the intensity which, with which these debates are held, if there's something, if, there, if there's a real issue, then it's completely clear that uh, AI, that in any way is supposed to influence things, we have the audit trails. We have to lay down the audit trails as legal requirements to be able to, to find which AI knew what at what time. So have fun with getting that info out of Google. Okay. New business models or new business areas. Extended live filter bubble for the next billion androids. First item. So we propose that good money could be earned with this. Um, we've had for a while. We've had the topic of old hardware and life cycle management, for which there are no further so software updates. So is that all electronic waste, or you know? And we thought it should be uh, possible by now to have to to have a filter bubble, a personal filter bubble for obsolete Android devices in your own household. Something like managed <laughs> living for iPads or uh, domestic care for iPads. Um, you have things where the whole cloud shit where devices have been programmed for uh, have gone for a long time. Uh, you know, all thermometers, smart thermometers that lack their cloud service. So what do you do with that four-year-old app? And you suddenly notice you can just surf to m.spiegel.de rather than www.spiegel.de and then it keeps working for a while. But then 
uh, for a bit of surfing it may still be enough, but maybe I'll take my router and, and, and tell it that all those large JavaScript libraries that are thrown at it should be thrown away by the router or animated GIFs, which the device cannot deal with anymore anyway. So that is like domestic care for iPads, filtering the net. You don't need child protection filters anymore. You need uh, something that says that the old processor of that device that still has a usable screen won't be able to cope with this content anymore kind of filter. So um, why throw these things away? Seriously, why? And uh, that f come, that goes from domestic care until the asylum unit for your old TV or something like that. If the TV station, you know, is, is a snitch because they all have in, in, Ethernet or in, Internet these days and a microphone, you have no choice but to lock them in. Uh, do we have a camera in here? My clock tells me that my telephone says presidential alert. Presidential, presidential alert. All your phones are belong all your to phones us. Are belong to us. Außer, Tim. Further. Außerdem behauptet mein Telefon. It claims that I was locked in with AT&T now. I was always a net customer, wasn't I? <laughs> oh dear. Well, without kidding, the next billion of devices on this planet, that will all be androids in the sense of Android. That's what we'll have to deal with. Uh, that is, well, no, it doesn't really matter. The battery will be out and that's it. Depends on the device, of course. Some of those have replaceable batteries. But you can still put them up on the wall as a picture or something. Is that bad or good? I don't know. Neither do I. Uh, I think for the next billion androids, we will need an answer, and that will be an, have to be an answer which can't take more than three months because it will take no longer than that for things to become obsolete, or maybe four. <coughs> so these are the clients, of course, that you have to, that you'll have to deal with, and the back ends you'll have to deal with as well. All those startups that go bust now, all the Kickstarter smart device makers that have all these more or less funny back ends and of whom you've bought the devices and suddenly the cloud goes out, gets broke, with which you place your phone calls and then you need a replacement cloud. So a cloud backend simulator for popular products, that's something where we think good business can be made in the future. And then we have fingerprint sewing machines, says the slide. So I have something for... We do throw a lot of stuff away, and the new business areas that we are not going to show because we think that's not what we want, what we want to see, but this one we will tell you because that is so bad, someone surely will have the idea, and you can decide if that's bad or not. You go here to Congress, look at the Starbucks talk, <coughs> go through the cold world outside, arrive here, think everything is so cold. Uh, my fingers are freezing, I need gloves, and then there are these gloves that are touchscreen sensitive, aren't there? You go down to the basement, see the sewing machines there, and you think, wouldn't it be, would it be fantastically, completely wrong if there was a service on which I could up to which I could upload an image of my finger and then with graphite they sew it on my glove onto the fingertip so I don't have to take it off to use the fingerprint sensor? And of course that is to a totally bad idea. It has to be said. Well, but you could, perhaps you could uh, make it as a kind of ring that you wear above or under the glove, which has an, a standard fingerprint. <laughs> and then you could put on the website, you could say on the website, guaranteed individual from 99 individual combinations. 
It has to be edible, something that you can swallow at the border check, right? <laughs> Jelly uh, babies, uh, which won't keep, of course. Da kann man noch was draus machen, so, something can be done from that. Just think about it for a while. There's something, some, some room for development. Okay, and then of course new transports. Uh, someone who is close to the uh, forefront. Scratch iris and fingers from Flickr. A scrape, scrape irises and fingers from Flickr. So, high resolution photos of yourself on the internet has become a problem if you are going to use biometrics, right? Particularly if you have the habit of waving to, into the audience or something, that it's very bad. And because that topic is over now, it, it's gone. That is so gone. Oh, talking about waving, the internet wants you to wants me to remind you of your time. I'm supposed to remind you of it. I have a question to the internet. What's the plural of Iris? <laughs> In German, that is. So maybe the internet will come up with an answer. And then personal drone, personal drone airspace defense. So that's where you could start thinking. We'll, we'll traditionally we try traditionally we try out new transports at the camp. So you'll start putting your thinking hats on, and maybe we'll have a competition for that. We'll have some space. We have people that can really fly drones well, and there's one on stage right now. <laughs> and it's dropped on their desk. And the question then is, how quickly will you get this thing out of the airspace? <laughs> Laser pointers are being used with or without collateral damage. Good, right. And then with that, we'll, are nearing the end. We have not that much to say about the cryptocalypse. The cryptocalypse, uh, apart from start practicing the exchanging of keys and algorithms. Practice, practice, practice. And the PKI tarot, uh, this will probably be similar to password changing policies, right? Yes. And that gets that leads us to the end. We wish you, as always, a good transition into the year of 1984. Get home well. And now comes the closing event. So, 